So what are the different type of overhead crane service classes? And for your application, how do you determine what duty cycle that you need? The good news is we're covering all that and more in this episode of Cranes 101. What's up guys, Devin here from Mozilla Companies and today we're covering overhead crane classification and duty cycle. In this video, we'll cover what service class means, we'll cover the different classifications from A all the way to F, and then at the end, we'll talk about how you determine the duty cycle for your application. So to be honest, this video would probably suck if it was just me standing here reading you all of the CMAA specifications for classes A through F of overhead cranes. And I would not want to do that to you because I would not want to watch that video either. So instead, I brought back Chris Whitney, our sales engineer, to help explain what a service class means. Crane service class actually applies more to the application than it does the crane. So when you think about what you're going to be moving, the material that you're going to be moving around, the crane that's lifting it it needs to be rated for the number of lifts per hour and also the percentage of the capacity of the crane that is going to be seeing the load. What? So let's say you have a five ton crane. The normal load that you're going to be lifting is more in the range of a four ton or three ton. The percentage, again, would be 80 to 60% of the actual capacity of the crane. The crane is actually designed to handle a higher capacity than the actual rated load. Oh, okay. So each overhead crane is specifically designed to lift a certain amount of capacity, uh, but a quick word of warning on going over that capacity. So even though it's rated at a certain capacity, you don't want to lift higher than that because it does have more wear and tear on the crane and the components itself. So it's really important to know the application that you're going to be placing a crane into. You don't want to underspend on a crane and then find out that it's less than what you really needed to use it for. You also don't want to overspend and break your budget and have something that is way beyond your use. So you might not know this, but there are six different classifications of overhead cranes to pick from. And they pretty much break down into three categories. Bearing life, how many hours you'll get out of the components, starts and stops, how many times that motor can handle stopping and starting, and then lifts per hour, how many times you'll be able to pick something up and move it along. If you're not 100% sure on what overhead crane you need, take notes on this part. This is why this video is made, and the more you do now in your research, the more time and money it'll save you in the future. So with the Class A crane, you're basically looking at a standby crane. It could be used as a backup in case the main crane goes down, or just for very, very moderate use. You get 1,250 hours of bearing life, up to two lifts per hour, and 75 motor start stops in an hour. So you may see these cranes in a motor repair shop, or in a steel mill, again, as a standby crane in case the main crane goes down. These types of cranes won't work in a bigger facility because the duty cycle is, is extremely low. So how does that differ from a Class B? So with a Class B duty cycle crane, you get a little bit more longevity out of the crane. Bearing life is 2,500 hours. You get two to five lifts per hour and also 75 motor start stops per hour. Typical use for these types of cranes, again, would be like a motor repair shop that gets a little bit more use. Um, you'd also see it in light duty machine shops as well. So with a class B crane is similar to a class A crane where you don't get a high usage out of it. It's still a moderate use, but it's not standby. And a class C? So a class C duty cycle crane you see in a higher use machine shop or a typical manufacturing facility. Bearing life, you get 5,000 hours. For number of lifts per hour, you get five to 10. And then with motor start stops, it's 150 per hour. A class D crane is more of a heavier use than the cranes we've discussed already. Bearing life is 10,000 hours. You get 10 to 20 lifts per hour and then 300 motor start stops. These types of cranes are found in a heavy manufacturing facility, such as a construction equipment manufacturer. So with a class E crane, this is what you would call a process crane or something that is in a severe duty application. These types of cranes are typically found in an auto manufacturer or a stamping application where high turnover as well as high usage. As you get 20,000 hours of bearing life, you're lifting over 20 times per hour and you get 600 motor start stops per hour. So classes A through E are pretty common all over the world depending on the manufacturer warehouse that you're standing in. However, there is one more type that people don't usually talk about and that's the crane class F because typically you need somebody to come into your facility and really recommend it since it's a higher duty cycle crane than anything else we've talked about before. So with the class F duty cycle crane, these are constant severe duty cranes. 
So this is the type of application where you really want to have a specialist come in and really determine this is exactly what you guys need for your application. Fortunately, there's a method to this overhead crane madness, and it comes down to two things, load class and load cycle. So in determining the duty cycle of your crane, you want to look at the relation of the load class and the load cycle. The load class is a relation of the overall capacity of the crane and the normal load that it sees. The load cycle is the number of times that the crane is going to be used over the life of the crane. You put these two together and you look at the correlation and that'll determine what kind of duty cycle your crane is going to see. Hopefully, this video was able to help you understand overhead crane classifications as well as the best way to determine the duty cycle that you'll need. If you like this video, definitely check out the rest of the Cranes 101 series. And while you're there, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel so you don't miss out on anything else that we'll be making. At Mozilla Companies, we have a team of highly skilled lifting specialists that want nothing more than to help save you time and money by giving you good advice on your lifting project, and they welcome that opportunity. So if you click the link above, it'll take you to a resource that we made for you. It's a 10 things to consider when buying an overhead crane checklist. It's 100% free, you don't have to spend any money on it, but it's built with you in mind. Learning crane classifications, learning duty cycles, all those things are great, and this guide is just another tool to help you on your way to buying an overhead crane. If you'd like to schedule a consultation on your next project, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'd be happy to help you however we can. Thank you for watching.